A couple of years ago, we were sent images of spaces that made our jaws really drop. We had never seen anything like it. Uh, images of bookstores in China that look like theme parks, that look like Alice in Wonderland scenes. And in the years that followed, a stream of this kind of spaces, of this kind of imagery uh, was sent to us. The work was made by Li Zhang, Chinese architect, interior designer, and we became really fans of her work. A couple months ago, I was invited to uh, fly over to China, to Shenzhen, and I met with one of her first clients, a client that let her work on a shopping mall, and told me that since Li Zhang had given the shopping mall a certain treatment, people were actually queuing up to enter the mall. And her client said, I brought her in to Shenzhen to make a co-working space, but then a co-working space with a difference, a co-working space for, yes, millennials. These people want something different, and Li Zhang is the person who can do that. Actually, she said, I only want to work with Li Zhang because she is fantastic, and she knows how to move people, how to reach people. So yeah, you can imagine that um, we've had her on the jury of the Frame Awards and we thought, while we have her here, let's get a little bit insight into her secret. So please welcome to the stage, Li Zhang. Hello, everyone. It's an honor to be invited by Frame to act as a judge and come here to share my story with you. To be honest, my last English speech delivered was in college in the UK. Ten years have passed. I failed to maintain my good English speaking skills. So please don't mind. Due to my poor speaking skills, I had written down what I'm going to share with you in case I carelessly speak Chinese during the talk. Please do not mind the way I deliver my speech, since this is the only way to ensure that I'm always on my right track. So my topic today is the permanent concern designer should focus on. Before I move on to my topic today, I'd like to briefly introduce myself first. I am Li Xiang from Shanghai, China. When I graduated from college as an architect, I went to Shanghai to actually start working as one. In 2011, I founded my own architecture design company. Then I entered the field of commercial interior design in 2013. Lucky for me, I'm doing pretty well. Then in 2015, I created my own furniture brand. But honestly, I have to say, my products don't sell that well. But don't worry, I still got many clients to pay for my design work. So, before I move on to my topic, I have another theory to tell you that if you want to be a good designer, you have to know who you are dealing with. Many clients believe that they are dealing with their client, but in fact, some clients are no help at all, just like married men. Don't doubt me. I'm single, but I do have a father that I need to deal with. Every time I call him, then I will say, where is my mom? So I say the real driving force for the designers is actually the demand of consumers. Why I said that? Because when online shopping hasn't spawned up in China, Usually, a retail store owner only served for certain range consumers around the store whose consumption was enough to support the store. And so, the store 
the store was open to sell products, we become to see the public would buy. And the consumer, the, the, sorry, the retailer owner only had the simple business calculus, make sure there is a variety of products on the shelves. And the aesthetics of the store design and the shopping experience were neglected. As we can see, there was a condition in the previous market, and even today, it hasn't been disappeared. The problem is that the owner, the retail owner, is often the one who determines the shopping experience. In other words, at that time, or even today, retailer wouldn't spend too much money to beautify the space in order to better serve the consumers. What they do is to make full use of tight budget and spend every penny cautiously. It's best to figure out the design at a low expense because the retailers always believed that the product will be sold anyway. And even consumers never realized that needed to be impressed by interior design when they are buying things. So I said, well, the retailer treated the consumers was just like the way your mom does to you. You have to eat whatever she cooks for you. So such a time when our clients had limited budget and consumers had low expectations and designers have little room for creativity finally come to an end with the emergence of online shopping. Because of the rapid development of internet in China, online shopping has become more convenient and more cost effective with a wide variety of choices. All of these have pointed out that consumers' demand have been considered in every possible way, which also make it especially difficult for offline retailers to stand out from the commercial competition. So my first interior design project was a bookstore, and the client had already owned 13 bookstores. They were not well decorated. You can see the picture on the screen. Just like this, very ugly. But at the time, they were good enough to attract more people because people's great demand for the paperback publications. Due to the impact of online shopping, my client had only two bookstores survived. He was also thinking how to survive his bookstores. Once he happened to see the photos of the most beautiful bookstore in Portugal on the internet, then one idea occurred to him. He contacted me and told me, if my bookstore is as beautiful as this, it might be able to read people away from their screens and come into the store. He believed that even if people just come to visit without buying anything, he still needed to attract as many people as possible. I think the idea was brilliant. Of the 100 consumers, are not necessarily equivalent to 100 orders. Zero consumer can only result in zero revenue. It's because of this project that I realized when the designer works on a commercial project, in addition to the traditional design method and basic aesthetics, there are more dimensions need to consider in order to flirt with your consumers, of course, by your design work. So the main aim of the design is actually to impress the consumers and attract them to the shop. It's also very important to impress the media because the media is willing to hunt for and spread novelty, which can help the design work be seen by more people. So with this philosophy, I started to review the concept of the design and ponder on how to dredge up the most touching part and convert it into design concept. 
a language that can be spread, as well as the feeling and impulsiveness that a reader can never experience while shopping online. So this is the bookstore I designed. I use a different concept in this store. One of space is pure white, a temple of books, where people are able to do some meditation. I also use the serenity of church to correspond to the soul purified by reading. When this bookstore officially opened, it received many positive feedback from the media and the readers. It's because of this project that the bookstore was named by media, by media as the most beautiful bookstore in China. This also boosts my clients' confidence in store expanding. So half a year later, I designed the second bookstore for the same client. This time, I used the concept of a kaleidoscope to map out the idea that the walls in books are full of changes. I hope the consumers will be touched by the space. When it officially opened, this bookstore also attracted many visitors and medias, even more than the first one. Because of the success of the previous two stores, my client aimed to establish more bookstores in other cities. So this is the third bookstore he opened in Hangzhou city. This time I used the concept of forest and tide to symbolize air and water nourish life, just like books. It attracted 38,000 attendants on the first day of operation. And it took only two hours to sell out all the coffee beans in the kitchen. This bookstore was also shown on the New York Times website. The next, another bookstore, my client, opened in Yangzhou City. For this project, I used the artistic techniques of bridge and ripple to create a concept to show how books function as bridges between wisdom and life. Readers can truly feel that this is not the only bookstore, but a space where they can dance with their souls. This bookstore was published by National Geographic in a textbook for India elementary schools. The bookstore series has attracted a large number of media reports and readers. My client has opened another 15 bookstores since he invited me to design for him in 2013. Through this case, my client exactly verified his ingenious business concept. But I had to say, it's not euro for a bookstore to sell you more coffee than books. The experimental success of this project was also enlightened me. That in the society where the online shopping has cannibalized the perfect space of offline retailers, the consumers have a new demand, which is the demand for experience-based consumption. The online shopping enterprises can take a share from the offline retailer industry, though. It's difficult for them to replace the service industries. People still need to go to somewhere, like going to the movies, having brunch with your besties, or playing games with your children. So for example, some clients of the Parent Child Entertainment Park space spend a lot on facilities to meet the functional goals so that the parents can accompany and have fun with their children. When it comes to space design, like this, they just need a designer to create, some, create something in the cheapest way, using some Simple, simply colors and some pictures to decorate the space in order to complete the overall design. One of my clients is a mother 
who accompanied her doctor every day, and she could afford everything for her doctor. But she was always disappointed by the indoor parent child entertainment park every time she went out with her doctor. So she decided to build one indoor parent child park by herself that she could accompany her doctor grow in a fairy tale. She found me. So this picture is the indoor parent child park I designed. I reintegrated the relationship between function and aesthetics. First, we, in, we analyzed what forms of entertainment children at different ages are fond of, so that we could integrate all kinds of functions by dividing them into blocks. And we studied many possibilities of the parent child park and turned it into a combined space which satisfies both entertainment needs for the kid and the social demand for the parents. Plus, we use the language of design to transform every different functional space into a dreamy scene, just like we turn the bookshelves into a rainbow shape. And we turn the game scene of children imitating adults into a city where there are kitchen, concert hall, changing room, cafe, and bank, etc. I made all the small houses into stone and mushroom shapes that make them look very cute. And we turn the restaurant into a romantic and gorgeous playground where you can eat with your family or have a party. We incorporated the entertainment facilities in the restaurant so that the children could play inside when the parents are having meals. And when the store officially opened, it ushered in about 2 million views on the single online platform within a week. And so 10 million Chinese yuan, which are around 1 million Europe, in pre-sales through the internet in just one week, which totally smudged similar entertainment park within five kilometer radius. And my client, this young mother became a, became a businesswoman overnight. She is now planning to open another five stores. So, from this case, I came to an amazing conclusion. Maybe your last step to success is to have a kid. Consumers are demanding a satisfactory experience after the consumption up upgrade more and more and it's becoming even more permanent. We are also focusing on creating pleasant space for consumers in all fields, just like hotels and office space, which are all very effective. This is the cool working space we completed last year. My client realized that if she wants to sell better, she needed us to create some common points for her potential consumers. I totally understand that, because nowadays the young customers are getting harder and harder to deal with. Therefore, we incorporated the concept of fun and healthy work into the design through the, some entertainment and fitness equipment that can be used while at work. Therefore, we incorporated the concept of fun and healthy work into the design. We also add some vibrant colors and interesting artworks to the space design in order to make it distinctive from the traditional office space. We hope that a mutual attraction can be created between the space and the consumers, and thus indirectly achieve the purpose of <laughs> Here is the robot. <laughs> Achieve the purpose of marketing for our clients. This project really drew in a large attendance when it began operating. 
The successful projects in different fields just reflect the idea I had when I worked on the first bookstore. Dutch is the designer who do not flirt with the consumers and not a good salesman. Society has been developing and progressing. I began to think about what else designer can do besides meeting the experience need of consumers. What do they need in the near future? This is our newly completed project, the Park Zoo Hotel. The intent of the hotel investor is to use the animal theme to create an experience base that's different from the other competitors. When I accepted this case, I said to my client, if you give me a chance, I can't only pay you back a beautiful and pleasant hotel to your consumers, but a space also concerned about public interest. I don't want the animals to simply become the design elements. I want to reveal the fact that some animals are on the verge of distinction through the space design. And thus stimulate the reflection and the solicitude among the public. It can be better if they eventually make some changes in mentality and behavior. And yes, they agreed. I've presented the crew facts taking place in the animal world, which artists take design and place them in very important spaces. For example, the hippo shaped chair at the door. We use the relationship between the road and his body to make a chair, which is a metaphor for the disruption of ecological balance caused by anthropogenic activities. I also created a gong design that is pointing directly at an elephant-shaped chair. So I use this design to symbolize the cruel crime committed against the animal when people pursue their wild desires. The empty can on the wall are recycled by our designers to highlight the littering. Moreover, through the installation called North Arc and Ladder, I would like to call for the protection of environmental. If we vandalize the environment, it will be difficult for us to redeem ourselves when the ecosystem crumbles. These art installations are my original designs based on the overall structure of the space. I integrated them into the space and turned this hotel into an art exhibit. Each side of furniture and installations reflects our concern about environmental degradation and wildlife animals conservation. When the project was completed, I posted on my blogs as usual. In three days, it was viewed near 500,000 time, 500, times and evoked strong resonance among tens of thousands of netizens. What impresses me is that the Chinese consumers are not only fond of beautiful and innovative things, they are also very concerned about serious issues such as environmental and wildlife conservation. So, no matter how European or Chinese market changes, no matter how the material life changes, the demand for ecological balance and sustainable environment should always be our priority. As a designer, this is also the direction we need to strive for. Sometimes I have to unionize the architectural concept well, sorry about the PowerPoint. There should be some pictures on the screen. Sometimes I have to unionize the architectural concept. We're working on the, in yes, that's it. <laughs> working on the interior design project. Sometimes I will automatically consider all aspects for my client in order to realize the minimizing costs and maximizing profits. 
And sometimes I feel and respond to the nature, life, and people as human beings living on Mother Earth. Fortunately, I have created a lot of experience base for consumers and helped my clients to achieve their business goals. I also try to convey the concept of environmental conservation in the designs, trying to find people's resonance beyond the commercial purpose. So finally, I have to tell that I love this world and everyone. Congratulations on the enormous success of the free, brilliant publication. God bless and thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for revealing some truths. Thank you for revealing some truths about the, the Chinese marketplace. Yeah. And thank you for giving some insight in um, how you tackle some uh, issues with your clients. I'm really impressed and I can only hope there is a real estate developer from Amsterdam or the Netherlands here in this space mm. who commission you to do something similar here in the Netherlands. Oh, I pretty love this land. <laughs> <laughs> similar, similar space is the um, mm, people smoke here. <laughs> yeah, that's something Just uh, like China. you should get rid of, uh, Li Jiang. You mean so. the retail store? Mm -hmm. I have seen quite, quite much. Uh, I, I have seen several interesting interior on the street like the dessert space, they are all very cute and lovely. Um, but uh, I think it's because of the different, different society problems. Uh, still have many people on the street, but in China, usually people will shopping online. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the most different space between China and Netherlands. Definitely. Thank you again. <laughs> See you Thank tonight. You. <laughs> People, give it up for Li Zhang, please.